Um, this is Czechoslovakia, and I've um, and it's the air mails uh, to 1939. And I'm just showing a little bit about the beginning of um, air flight. And the history of aviation goes back more than 2000 years. And the first man-made flight objects were kites. And the earliest record is from 200 BC in China, when a general flew over enemy territory tied to a kite in order to calculate the length of a tunnel to be excavated so his troops could enter enemy territory. He survived the experience. And these are just some labels of man's early attempts at flying and they're from a series of German advertising labels. So you can see they're um, not exactly kites but they are uh, balloons and uh, the beginnings of air airplanes. Right, there was um, in 1908 and in 1898, there were some exhibitions in Prague at a big exhibition site. And uh, these are two cards from these exhibitions. And it shows that one of the one on the left shows man's idea of perhaps future flight. And they had both tethered and free ascending balloons for people to go up in at the exhibition. So quite early on. The first person in the Czech lands was uh, to think about flight was a man called Jan Kaspar. Um, he was born in 1883 and he came from a wealthy family um, in Pardubitz and he was interested in bicycles and, and uh, cars and he graduated from Prague University as an engineer and he worked briefly for a firm called Laurent and Clement, which we now know as Skoda. And in 1909, he began building his own plane, but it was too heavy to fly. And then he purchased a French plane, a Blériot, and he equipped it with his own engine, but he later switched to another engine. But in 1911, he successfully constructed his own functional aircraft, the JK, which you see on the right there. And um, his first test flight from Pardubitz to Krudim and back about 12 kilometers in, on the 30th of April. Um, and then he, the same day, he flew for a distance with his cousin. His cousin is shown at the side on the right there. In 1911, he flew, he flew a distance of 120 kilometers. And then it was the longest flight in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Kasper donated his JK um, uh, airplane to the National Technical Museum and you can still see it there. He had rather an unhappy life. Um, after the death of his father, the money for um, playing with, with planes and tinkering with engines um, dried up. So he had to then manage the family estates. And in 19, and he became a state bureaucrat. And um, unfortunately, he um, took his own life in March 1927. But he's still remembered every year in Czechoslovakia in the, or in the Czech Republic. Um, a special flight is made once every year from Pardubitz to um, Prague to remember the flight. And there's a um, commemorative council and a postcard from 1991 for this. In the early years of the 20th century, there was a great interest in developing flying machines, including airships. And pioneers, um, av aviators traveled to give flying displays and they tested themselves and their machines. Several German airships had made commercial flights, but it was only in 1912 that the first LZ-13, the Hansard, made its first passenger flight outside Germany. Um, this is a postcard from a 19, uh, um, an early postcard, and it shows one of these airships flying over a place called Marienbad. It's a spa resort in the Czech Republic. It was sent to Kolin, in 1913. The Zeppelin image of, was added to the postcard later. A number of these scenic postcards were made before World War I, as in this case. 
The number Z99 on the Zeppelin is spurious. It wasn't launched until the 14th of July 1917. And the route plaque above showing that it was the line Friedrichshafen to Marienbad and then on to Vienna, it's also a figment of the imagination. The first flight in Czechoslovakia was the 4th to the 5th of September 1919 and it was a, a special flight from Prague to pra Paris and it was carrying diplomatic mail. This was a postcard made of the of this first flight and it shows the plane as it is. Uh, it was some 600 miles there and back. It carried diplomatic mail and many of these early flights within Czechoslovakia and beyond did carry mail but it was mainly military or diplomatic items with very little civilian mail. The aircraft were usually military machines flown by military personnel. As you see this was just after the First World War when um, airplanes were used during the First World War. After World War I, the, uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was broken up with several new independent states created, one of which was Czechoslovakia on the 28th of October 1918. Czechoslovakia had many links with European countries. They had um, legionnaire armies who were fighting on the side of the Allies in the, against Austro-Hungary in the First World War and there were also political, trade and commercial ties <coughs> with many places in Europe. And there's a map of Europe there in 1914 showing the huge area of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and in darker colour you can see um, Moravia and Bohemia. Those two provinces made up what um, Czecho and then Slovakia was added later to become Czechoslovakia. <clears throat> um, the development of Czechoslovak airmails, um, we have two companies. Uh, the Czech government started its own Czech state airline, CSA, in 1923. Uh, and in 1927, CLS um, started up and it was um, really founded by Škoda. Škoda took over a lot of smaller airlines within Czechoslovakia and incorporated them into their own business. And um, both of these airlines were based at Kapely Airport in Prague. It's just, it was a military facility just outside Prague. Um, CSA was founded for mainly international routes at flying out of Czechoslovakia and CLS was um, did most of the internal routes as you can see from the um, map there. The red lines are the uh, CSA routes and the CLS are the black ones. Um, this is from a series of matchbox labels um, produced by the Solo Company of Susis in Czechoslovakia. They operated from 1840 and they're in fact still in business. And these are some of the aircraft that flew during the 1923-1939 period. And quite a number of these aircraft were actually produced or made under license within Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovak airmails. The first airmail stamps were produced on the 11th of August 1920. There were only three values to begin with because um, there were only three routes from Prague to somewhere else. It was the Prague-Strasbourg route, Prague to Paris and Warsaw route, and then there was a Prague-London route. As you can see, they weren't they were overprinted stamps of the very first stamps from Czechoslovakia, the Hatchany series. The first one was uh, the 14, 14 crowns printed in brown on the um, 200 Heller stamp. 24 crowns was for the Prague, Paris, Warsaw route and Prague, London route was the 28 crowns. 
Um, the currency for Czechoslovakia is 100 halero, hala, to make one Czech crown. And I looked up in an, um, a very early tourist book and the exchange rate in 1928 of 100 crowns is approximately one shilling. I don't, I don't think that that's right somehow, but this guidebook said that um, 70 to 100 crowns per day would be a very good um, amount for an average tourist would need just for one day. So it's quite interesting. Right, the first airmail stamps, well, here they are used to the three destinations. These three destinations also had their own um, airmail etiquettes. As you can see, the first one on the left is um, going to Strasbourg, but this cover, although it's supposed to have gone by air, it, I don't think it did. It's dated the 13th of January, but the earliest recorded flight was the 25th of January, 1921. So I think it's um, a spurious cover. The other two did go, um, they did fly to London and the other one to um, Paris, but they are um, two uh, stamp dealers, both, to, both stamp dealers in Prague. It's very difficult to find proper commercial um, mail from this period. As you can see, the first animal stamps were only um, produced on the 11th of August 1920, and they were valid until the 30th of April 1921. So it's only a very short period. The second airmail issue was again another overprinted issue. This was the agriculture and science um, stamps. And again, only three stamps were overprinted because they were still only flying these three routes. But they needed the stamps, they needed the extra overprints because the uh, price of the air post was going down, the airmail fee was um, reduced. Um, during the 1920s, interest in transporting people, cargo and mail by air for commercial gain grew. And as aircraft became more reliable, regular mail cargo services, both within Czechoslovakia and abroad, were set up. The Czech government founded CSA in October 1923, and the first transport flight, flight, flight from Prague to Bratislava um, was made later that month. Operations were mainly internal flights until 1930, but CLS operated from 1927 on European routes, and both airlines operated from Kabelia Airfield, originally a military facility just outside Prague. The overprints on the second airmail issue are slightly different to the ones on the Hrajni ones. And you can see that the um, the price of the airmail fee has gone down. It was 50 heller, heller on the first, on the, on the one on the right, and the 100 heller overprinted in black on the 200 violet. It was previously 24 crowns, and the 250 one is, it, used, it was 28 crowns, which is a great difference. 250 equates to two crowns, 50 hello. Right, uh, this is a copy of a poster produced by CFRNA um, about 1920 in Czech to advertise their air service from Prague. And during the 1920, early 1920s, competition between rail and air flight from Prague to Paris by rail was 32 hours, but it was six hours by air, although only two passengers could be accommodated in the aircraft that you can see. This was a daily service for passengers, letter and packages. Um, this envelope here is from the Czechoslovak Athletic Committee in Prague, and it's being sent to Paris 
where the 1924 Olympics were held in Paris. It's dated 1924, which is quite a nice piece of um, mail and it's commercial. And can you see that the airmail etiquette is still the airmail etiquette just for the Paris route? Um, I forgot to tell you that the airmail etiquettes had to be paid for. They were priced at five heller each. On the 1st of April 1921, it, a circular cancel was first used at Prague Airport. It was only Canceller A only. Praha Letista, Prague Airport. This was in use until 1934. ML items that originated outside Prague were usually cancelled at the airport, but items from within Prague often had no airport cancel. And there, as, as I see, as you can see from the examples below, the one on the left came from Carlsbad, but it's also received the um, Prague Airport Council. The one on the right originated in Prague and doesn't have that council, but it does have an etiquette for the Strasbourg route. During 1920s, foreign airmails made scheduled regular services to and from Prague for passengers, freight and mail. And it was becoming much cheaper, quicker, safer and more convenient by air. And as there were so many different um, air routes now, uh, you'll notice that the airmail etiquettes have disappeared and there are rubber stamps used on the mail. The one on the left is the first flight from Prague to Vienna on the 14th of August 1922 by CNFRA. On the 1st of June 1925, Sydney, the Company Internationale de Navigation Ariane, excuse my French, later became Air France, inaugurated a regular service mm -hmm. from Prague to Vienna, Belgrade, Bucharest, Istanbul and Ankara. And this is a first flight cover for the Prague Vienna leg. Um, I've, I've um, priced, tried to give you the um, cost of the airmail and the foreign letter rate. And most of these letters that I'm showing you, or the ma airmail material I'm showing you, is correctly franked. <coughs> Excuse me. It's sometimes quite difficult to find correctly franked um, mail because each country had a different rate for, um, a rate for sending airmail. And there were also different weights for carrying airmail. Sometimes it was five grams and sometimes the limit was 10 grams. The one on the right is a cover from the Jubilee Exhibition of Postage Stamps that was held in Prague and it was held by the KCF Club of Czech Philatelists. It was sent to Italy and the foreign letter rate was two crowns 50. The registered letter was 250 and the airmail fee was one crown. So as you can see, it's the correct franking. There's the airport, the Prague airport um, council there too. And there's the boxed rubber stamps in red for the airmail. <coughs> 21st of March 1927 was the first flight for Berlin, Dresden, Prague and Vienna and this, this service was operated by DLH, Deutsche Lufthansa, which came, later became Lufthansa and also the Austrian um, airline and also CLS, the Czech one. The flights continued on this route until August 1939 and they produce these rather nice postcards for the first flights. And if you notice the brown one um, has the, um, the, the um, Vienna coat of arms at the top, Prague in the middle and Berlin at the bottom. And then the return flight, Berlin, Prague, and then Vienna. And this uh, by this time, Prague, um, 
airport had also got another council, as you can see over in the over on the right. It's a lozenge um, council for mail, and it's Prague 82. And that was in use from 1927 until 1929. <clears throat> um, some internal flights by CSA. The first internal flight, 1923, linked Prague to Bratislava, which was the capital of Slovakia. And then um, the flight was extended to Kozitsa, which was further um, to the east. There were flights of the 15th and 16th of March from 1927 from Prague, stopping at Brno, Bratislava, and then Kozitsa, and then returning to Prague. And these are examples of these first flights. You can see that both express, they've got the Prague registered label on the left hand side, um, the lozenge shaped Prague Airport Council. There's still no um, airmail etiquettes on there. There's a, um, it's has, has been done with a crayon and a, an, a typewriter. And the one on the right hand side, once it got into Prague, it went through the um, pneumatic system for delivering mail, which was operative within Prague. It has 7501 in black on the, on the envelope there. These items are both, again, philatelic because they were sent or received by this stamp dealer in Prague. But they're still quite nice because it's quite difficult to find material for this, these two, first two um, airmail. Internal flights again to uh, Czechoslovakia. During the 1920s, there was an e increasing number of tourists visiting Czechoslovakia, especially to the spa resorts of Karlsbad, Mariansky Lazny and elsewhere. And CSA ran a regular service from, from and to Prague from, to Mariansky Lazny from 1927 to 1938. And from 1930, Prague to Mar Marianne Slazny and Karlo Vivari, these two spa towns. They only operated between May and September because um, that was the season for being within the spa. CLS operated a similar service from 1928, but it linked Castle and Rotterdam, London to Marianne Slazny or Chemnitz, Leipzig to Karlo Vivari. And this again is one of the um, first flights. Again, you've got the um, lozenge shaped um, Prague Airport Council. There's also a Mariansky Lazny Marienbad Council on it. And um, the, again, there's no airmail etiquette. 1929, a regular service from Prague, Bratislava to Kozitsa started in 1924 and it was now extended to Užerod, which is right down in the east of Slovakia. And um, there's a, a postcard here showing the first, the, the plane that was used and it's got it, the stamp first flight um, on the 6th of May, 1929. And you could see the airport at Ujerod had its own council. It's not only in Roman script, it's also Cyrillic script underneath. This was, um, Ujerod is right down in the east and part of um, Slovakia and it's in Ruthenia and it's um, on the borders of Russia. There's another card here postal stationary card with a view of the Giza colonnade in Kalavivari, which had been sent to Ujerod. And the internal postcard um, is 50 heller, and the air fee was then 15 heller. So you can see from the, 20, from the very high um, air fee right at the beginning, it's come right the way down. 
And by now we've also got um, dedicated airmail labels. It's the blue one on the postcard and it's in the dual language, Czech and French. And there were two versions of these um, airmail etiquettes. In 1930, there was um, an air show at Carlsbad. And um, this is a postcard showing you the, uh, of the, from the um, air show. And it's got a special cancel on the stamps underneath and a postcard, a photocard sent to Prague dated 18th of um, August, 1933. The, the airport at Carlo Vivari is about five kilometers from the town. They acquired the land in 1927 with government funding and the buildings opened in 1930. They got a very prestigious award for the, um, for the buildings. And during the World War II, the German Luftwaffe used the facility to train pilots. And even today, the, the airport is still used, but um, it has only limited flights to Russia and Germany. And again, if you look right over on the right there, you can see Carlo Vivari um, Airport has its own um, airport stamp. Right, the third airmail issue. By now, airport air fees were becoming much um, cheaper. And so rather than using ordinary stamps, they decided to produce a set of stamps. And here's the eight stamps that they issued on the 16th of December, 1930. The variety of denominations were required because mail could be sent to, by air to more distant destinations. The designer and the graver of the eight stamps was Carol Carl Seitzinger. They were print, printed recess and gravure. And there were reprints in 1936 with different perforations. And an additional 30 Heller value was issued on the 26th of April, 1939, um, because, of, uh, because the rate of the inland um, air fee had gone down. They show the stamps show two different um, aircraft in flight over rural scenes of um, Czechoslovakia, but the 10 and the 20 show um, a, an aeroplane in flight over the city of Prague. I think they're quite nice. There are a lot of varieties of these, and um, I, but I haven't gone into the details of that here. These are a couple of original signed artwork for the two aircraft depicted on the eight stamps. The three crowned is the Smolik S190 and um, the 10 crown one is the Fokker F8. I think they're rather nice drawings. Um, the one on the right for the 10 crown I particularly like because it's um, only, it's not completed. It hasn't had all the blue um, colour wash put into it. This is a supplementary issue that was issued on the 23rd of April 1939. It was issued as the there was a decrease in the internal air free from one crown to 30 heller. And you'll note on there that the name of the country is not Czechoslovakia, it's Sesko dash Slovensko. Slovakia gained its autonomy on the 6th of October 1938 with Czechoslovakia. And the stamps were valid in Bohemia and Moravia until the 14th of, the, of December 1939 and they were valid in Slovakia until 30, 31st of uh, July 1940. Slovakia gained its complete independence from Czechoslovakia on the 14th of March 1939. And uh, as you know, the protect protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia um, came into being on the 15th of March 1939. So the Germans had moved in by then. And most airmail, well, all airmail flights were um, discontinued after these dates. There were two printing formats for this um, 30 Heller stamp. A sheet of 
as you as you can see here, five times ten, and they were also issued in a, a ten by ten format. Internal air mails from 1930 to 1939. The um, covers that I'm going to show you to begin with are, all, are the, just for the inside Czechoslovakia, and then I'll show you some um, outside uh, Czechoslovakia. Both of these covers were flown by CSA on regular scheduled services. There's a small map of Czechoslovakia there, and you can see um, right here is Prague. This is Brno, which is the capital of um, Moravia, part of uh, Czechoslovakia. And here is Bratislava, which is the capital of Slovakia. And this part down here is called Ruthenia, which was um, acquired by Russia in, um, after the Second World War. So this is the Czech Republic today, this bit here, plus Moravia, and this bit is Slovakia today, the Czech Republic, um, the independent Republic of Slovakia. These two, are, these two covers here are from Prague to Bratislava in 1923, and then the, nine, the one on the right is 1926 Brno to Bratislava. And um, there's a nice, the blue etiquettes are again on the, um, on the envelopes. <clears throat> there were quite a lot of links um, with other, other air mails, other airlines, but here we are in 1931, there's a first flight from Prague to Marianne Skilazny and to Carlo Vivari and then back again. These are the spa towns that we, I, I mentioned before. Um, and this is a special postcard on the right here to show, to publicize the um, routes. The one on the left is a postcard to Ujerod, which is right down in um, Slovakia. And it has the correct postings and it has got the first flight um, cancellations on it from Carlo Vivari and um, from uh, Prague. <coughs> Excuse me. This is um, a card for the first flight from Pishtani to Bratislava. Pishtani is another spa town and um, they had flights to Pishtani as well. This links in with other airlines who were also linking in to Czechoslovak um, airports by this time. And you can see on the um, postcard on the left, the um, logo of CSA. It's this one here. We talked about, um, I talked to you about um, Jan Kaspar and he had a flight that remembers him every year and here's a cover to remember his, his first flight from Pardubitz to um, Prague and this cover here is from 1937. The Czechoslovakia produced some two colour cancels. They were very pretty, um, entirely philatelic and eventually they produced three colour cancels as well. And this is one of the cover, this is a, a cover to remember Jan Kaspar and it was flown by CSA. Links with other airlines. Um, here's Sabina from Prague to Brussels. And over on the right is linking in with Moscow um, Aeroflot. And these, that's um, an advertising card 
showing the different um, routes that they flew. They went from Prague through to Cluj in Romania and then on to Moscow. Vienna and Berlin. This is European destinations now. Um, this was on the uh, this on the left is got, went on the fifteenth of January nineteen thirty two and it was flown by CLS. Um, it has a Prague airport cancellation on the on the reverse of it, and the postage then was reduced letter to um, Vienna was one was was two crowns the registered um fee was two two crowns 50 express key express five crowns and airmail one crown and it's the correct fa um correct franking for that um item the next item over on the right here is from Bruno to prague um to Ber it went from Bruno to Prague, sorry, by rail, and then Prague to Berlin by air, flown CLS. But it's been opened in Berlin, and you can see the tape that's been used to seal it up. It's um, ex foreign exchange control. This was in 1938, so it's getting really quite close to um, Germany taking over the rest of Czechoslovakia. Or Bohemian Moravia. Um, mail to Riga, Latvia and Warsaw, Poland. <coughs> Excuse me. The one on the left has got a circular red Berlin 62 mit Luft post, post before that, um, showing that it's gone through Berlin to um, and then on to Riga. The other one has gone to from Wimperk in Czechoslovakia to Warsaw, Poland, and it was flown by Lot, the Polish airline, which came into used to come, came into Prague, and it's a commemorative um, cancel for the 50th anniversary um, of the Sokol, the Wimperk Sokol um, organization. <coughs> A piece of um, mail that's been sent to Italy from a place called Jablonets nad Nisso. Jablonets is the centre of a uh, jewellery making business and uh, not um, diamonds. What are they called? Diamonds and uh, sapphires and things, rubies. Precious stones. Yes, yeah. precious stones. These are um, more for um, bling, if you like, um, jewellery. The item's gone to Italy, to Murano, which is a place where they also make jewellery, but it, it arrived at the airport too late to catch the plane, and so it's been sent by ordinary mail. And you can see there's a, um, it's gone to a, a a post result and uh, address there. So the 25 cent post fee has been applied in Murano. <coughs> Two pieces of mail, one to Oldby in Sweden and one to Timisoara in Romania. It went from, the one on the left went from Prague to Berlin by CLS and then Berlin to Stockholm um, air and then it went um, land transport to its final destination. The one on the right has gone to Romania and it went to Prague to Cluj by CSA and then rail to Timisoara and you can see the different cancels there. Prague 7 has got the airport council. A 
piece of mail to London on the left. And this is double weight, um, a double weight um, letter. It went from Prague to Rotterdam by CLS and then from Rotterdam or Amsterdam by KLM through to London. The piece of the item on the, on the right here is the use of a supplementary 30 Hella stamp. This, I don't think, ever flew because by this time, um, when this was posted, um, it was um, it was a part of Bohemian, the protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. And so it's got a sensor mark on it, but whether it actually ever arrived in Ireland, I don't know. There was no marking on the back to show it. Now we come to um, commercial air mails to 1939 beyond, beyond Europe. And the first two items are to Africa. The one on the left is from the spa town of Pirstani, and it's um, a very nice envelope showing the Grand Hotel, the Grand Hotel Royal in Pirstani, in this um, spa town. Um, it would have gone um, from Prague to Budapest by rail, and then from Bu Budapest to Amsterdam and then from Amsterdam to Athens by air, and then probably from Athens by Imperial Airways down the eastern coast of Africa to Cape Town. And again, if you, if you see the postage, the foreign letter rate to 20 grams was 250. The airmail fee is each five grams is um, is three fifty, so the total air fee was seven crowns, and the it's correctly franked at nine fifty. The one on the right is going to Kenya, and again, this is the correct um, franking for that item, and it's got the. Um, Alexandria, it went to Alexandria, and then from Alexandria to, down to um, Kenya, probably by um, Imperial Airways. This was in 1938, so it's getting quite near to um, difficult times for Czechoslovakia. <clears throat> Again, an, another two items going to Africa. This one, the one on the left is going to Tangier. It arrived, it was sent on the 23rd of August and it arrived on the 28th of August. So it's um, not too bad. The, uh, the timing is quite good. Um, it went by rail to Prague and then from Prague to Paris by Air France and then to Tangier. Again, the um, it's correctly franked and it's um, you can see the boxed air Prague airport um, cancel there and the Paris arrival mark and again Tangier in Morocco. This is another one that's going to Malakal in the Upper Nile province in Sudan, and it's um, addressed to the district commissioner there. And again, it's, it's um, correctly franked, and it's got some very nice um, cancels on the, on the reverse. A boxed Prague 7, Alexandria, and then uh, the arrival um, by Sudan Airmail. That only took six days from Prague to arrive in uh, Sudan. We come now to South America 
And this is the first South American flight by the Graf Zeppelin. The Graf, the, um, Graf Zeppelin and the Zeppelins did um, fly over to South America and they and this is a um, this is a, a postcard of Hugo Eckner who was who was the pilot of the um, and commander of the Graf Zeppelin for 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 a very long time he was originally a journalist but he made his first airship flight in 1911 gaining a pilot's license that same year on the left you can see the various cancels there's one in black there for the um, first South American flight for 1932 and this is a large circular red Deutsche Luftpost Berlin Friedrichshafen to show that the um, item was okay to be sent on the Zeppelin. Again it's quite amazing this item was franked in Carlsbad on the 13th of March 1932 but it arrived in South America at the Rio Grande do Sol on the 26th of March 13 days it's not so bad is it to get mail that quickly <coughs> another piece of Graf Zeppelin mail This is the 11th of May, 1933. In 1933, the LZ-127 made nine South American flights. <clears throat> One flight could carry 52,000 postcards and 50,000 letters. And the delivery of mail took about a week faster than if you had sent the item by sea. And by the time that the LZ-127 retired, she'd conveyed some 53 tonnes of mail. And you can see on here, there are the various um, cancels. There's the hexagonal special cancel for the first South American flight for 1933. If anybody can tell me what the double circle black 133 is on the top right hand corner there, I'd be very pleased. And on the back there, you can see the arrival in Buenos Aires on the 11th of May. This is um, uh, the only piece of South America mail that I've got that went with the catapult um, system. The North American route had operated this um, catapult system for since 1929 but they didn't use it on the South America route <coughs> excuse me until um, until 1933 they started trials in 1933 and then um, in 1934 and the beginning of 1935 they used this the same sort of catapult system that had been used on the North American route but it was very short-lived because by the time that it became operational, um, aeroplanes were much had much more power and could um, go right the way across the South Atlantic without stopping. What happened was that um, the mail was sent um, to. <coughs> I'm sorry. It was the mail was flown to Bathurst in Gambia and then it was put on board one of these catapult ships which had um, there were only two of them that operated on the South American route they were called the Westphalen and the Schwaben land and they had they were taken on board and then the ship sailed for 36 hours and then catapulted the ship, catapulted the aeroplane off to fly on to Natal in Brazil. And you can see the 
um, normal German standard staging cancel from air, for airmail to South America. And it was, this was used whether it was flown by DLH or Zeppelin because um, it was becoming, the Zeppelin wasn't flying quite so often. And there was an agreement between DLH and Zeppelins to that they would um, not, um, not have their special cancel for each flight. <coughs> this is another one, a use of the, low, the higher value stamps, the 10 crown and the 20 crown stamps. This was um, posted in Carlo Vivari on the 27th of August, 1938. And it arrived in Buenos Aires on the 4th of September, 1938. It was flown from Carlo Vivari to Prague by CSA and then on to Berlin by, by the CLS, the Czech um, airline, and from Berlin to Friedrichshafen and on to Natal by DHL or Air France. They had DHL and Air France had a, an agreement about um, flying mail down on the South, Ameri South American route. And then from Natal to Buenos Aires, it would have gone by the Condor line. The standard German cancel for the South American mail was applied in Friedrichshafen. And then you could see on the reverse, um, the, uh, the receiving mark in Buenos Aires. A North American, New York City by air and sea. This man, um, again in Jablonets, um, he was obviously, um, a, it's obviously a commercial piece of mail to, because it's to a company. And he was, I should think, he was a precious stone um, or in a jewelry trade, but this was a, a heavy item and the air fee to North America was seven crowns per five grams. So this letter would have been 56 crowns plus four crowns. So it would have cost 60 crowns. And he is put on the, uh, the top of the letter in red to go by airmail from Prague to Paris. And once it got to Paris, it was then to go by rail to Le, or air to Le Havre on, and then it was to take the ship to, to New York City. So this one was flown part of the way and then it went by sea. <clears throat> um, a piece of mail to India. This is from one of the steelworks in Czechoslovakia um, going to India. And it's got a, a very nice, a meter mark, that's right, a meter mark um, for, the, for the company, from the Poldy Steel, Steel Company. Um, it has an Athens trans, transit mark on the, on the reverse of it, and then a Calcutta receiving mark on the 25th of March, 1934. Again, it's, um, there was a new rate for airmail, um, but they obviously haven't collected the extra, the postage due, which was 50, uh, 50 heller. Um, Manila to the Philippines. And this went by KL, uh, a KLM envelope, which was advertising the Amsterdam Bratislava to Batavia or Jakarta text was in Czech and it says that you could um, Amsterdam to J Batavia was in five and a half days. So it was a quite, quite um, a quick way of sending mail. This item was received in Mal Manila and then it went on by steamer.
Another one to the Dutch East Indies. This one was um, gone to Komatov, from, uh, from Komatov or Komatau. Then it went to Prague, Athens, as a transit mark, and then it was received in Sumatra. Moira NM, I'm not sure if that's the right, correct, uh, that correct pronunciation, but um, you must forgive me. I do not know this language. On the envelope that somebody has written 17 grams to make sure that they've got they've got the right um, weight for and it's franked correctly. Wellington, New Zealand. And again, this is probably gone. Um, it's gone to London and then Imperial Airways to Sydney, Australia, and then probably forwarded by the local uh, a local air service to Wellington in New Zealand. The total um, franking on that was 17 crowns 50. And if you think that the air fee originally just to go to London was 28 crowns right at the beginning of this um, uh, display, I think it's come down quite a lot to go to New Zealand for that amount of money. And here's the last slide of all. This is au revoir CSA and CLS. In 1939, the um, Germans entered uh, Czechoslovakia or the rest of the remaining bit of Czechoslovakia, which was Bohemia and Moravia, and the CSA and CLS finished operations. CSA continued after, um, reopened after the war, but CLS never started up again. There's the, um, a nice advertising label for CSA. And this card is from a series of cards which was promoting the development of aviation in Czechoslovakia. Each card's got a unique number on the, on the reverse with the text to be included in the state lottery to be drawn on the 16th of May, 1938. The cards cost um, one crown over the price of the card and the prize was a flight to Paris and return. And there were other prizes as well. And the face of the card shows a CLS Avia flying over Rotterdam in 1928. This was the first year of a regular passenger mail service between Prague and Rotterdam. The BH-25 was built by Avia in Czechoslovakia and it carried five passengers and two crew. And there were a total of eight were in service with CSL between 26 and 1936. So that's uh, Czechoslovakia, air, air mail to 1939, uh, to the beginning of the war. Thank you.